some of our missionary videos from the Assemblies of God that we have. Uh, we talked about this before, but we give. I think we have 26 different missionaries or organizations that we sponsor. I think we just added. Uh, we just added CareNet here recently. Uh, some of y'all know who, what CareNet is. It's a local. Um, CareNet is a local nonprofit organization that offers uh, free pregnancy tests, free STD screenings, and free ultrasounds for uh, women who, especially ones, their goal is for ones who are considering abortion. That's right here in Owensboro. And uh, so that basically their goal is to get them to get a, an ultrasound um, so hopefully that then they see the baby, that they'll change their mind, right? Um, if you weren't here a couple weeks ago, we prayed. I felt like the Lord really wanted us to pray for women who've had abortions and who are even who are born again Christians, and it's something they've done in their past. They really needed healing. Uh, I just feel like praying for that right now as well. So, Father, we just we pray, God, that the healing oil from heaven would come right now in Jesus' name for for every mother, Lord, for every woman who has been through that traumatic experience, God, that that is, knows maybe now knows you and has a relationship with you now and just carries that guilt and shame, Father. I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that. The healing would come right now, Lord, to let them be understood that they're forgiven from all of their sins, Lord, everything from the east is from the west, Lord, from the depths of the sea, everything, Lord. I just pray for healing to come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. So we, we moved some money over there as well to CareNet. Uh, it was pretty incredible. We went to their banquet, um, I think it was last week, and they had this girl, this young girl that actually me and Maddie actually knew, and and they had her testimony, and they had a video testimony of her. Um, and by the way, if you have, you know, if the Lord's, everybody's testimony is awesome. Amen? <laughs> How many of you know that my testimony can make some people feel like they're doing pretty good? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, man, I'm a pretty good person. He's screwed up. So... Um, they had a testimony of her, and uh, she was going to get an abortion. Um, and she found a care net online. She Googled places. And what they do is they, they just inform these girls about birthing, adoption, or ab abortion. And, um, and then they pray with them. They present the gospel to them. Uh, they don't shame them. They don't, none of that. They don't tell them, you know, this is wrong and this is a sin. You know, th none of that. You know, and so... And they showed this girl up there, and she was talking about how she wanted to get an abortion. And then she got the ultrasound, and after she saw the ultrasound, she went and got her boyfriend and then brought him in there. And then they both saw the baby, and when they saw the baby actually in the ultrasound, they decided to keep the baby. And that's amazing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and so it was pretty amazing. that they. And then her and her baby were there. <laughs> and so it was just awesome. It was so good. And it was, they, they actually, the speaker got up and he said, the first thing he said was, we might as well just take the offering now. After that, I was like, he's, he's not wrong. Like that, if that doesn't give you, you know, enough to want to give to something like that, it's amazing. So we, we now give to them monthly as a church um, as well. So something we do here, we've been talking about is our, we try, we, we give out 10% uh, of everything. So we basically tithe the tithe. And, uh, and like I said before, uh, and not very many churches do that. Okay, they just, they just don't. So it's awesome. It's awesome. And some of you like, say, well, why are we giving to missionaries? It's like, man, have you seen some of the work our missionaries are doing? They're doing way more than us, way more. We better keep giving to them, you know, because, you know, hundreds of people getting saved every year and discipled and churches being built. And, I mean, it's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing. Lord, I, I just ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and, and just touch our hearts right now, Jesus, that we would receive anything, God, that we have for you. So, Lord, we just invite you to come and teach, and, Lord, do whatever you want to do in Jesus' mighty name. Let's stand up really quickly. I thought I'd let you all out of this and do our declarations. I'm about to change them soon, by the way, just so you know, so you can be anticipating. Can you put those up, please? All right, we're going to repeat this out loud, and then you're going to celebrate. You're going to celebrate and give God praise. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. All right, good. You ready? I am not who my past experience says I am. I am who God says I am. Come on. Thank you, Lord. 
That's good news. Look at your neighbor and say, that's good news. Y'all ready? I have been set free and released from all bondage through what Jesus has done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And this one's good. Y'all need this. Today is the day of my breakthrough. I am free. Come on. I am free. Amen. You can be seated. Bless you. Um, yes, we've been talking about giving. And, and uh, I'm just, how many of you know that there's a whole lot of Sundays in a year? Right? And guess what? There's even more next year to come. <laughs> and like, Pastor, you know, we want a fresh word, you know? 52 times a year. You know what I'm saying? So as a pastor, I'm sure every pastor feels like this, but sometimes it's like, all right, Lord, do you want me to continue building on what you're giving me or do you want me to move away? And I feel like the Lord told me to continue building just a little bit from a different perspective. Um, it was awesome having Pastor Ethan with us talking about the talents and what are you good at? You're good at if you're hospitable or you can cook or whatever it may be. Um, how many of you know that we... we I, especially in this church, we, we really label ourselves as a spirit-led church. How many of y'all understand what that means? Raise your hand. How many of you say, I don't know what that means? Raise your hand. A few of you, good. They seriously though. A spirit-led church, what does that mean? That means that we, we invite Holy Spirit to lead our congregation, to speak to us personally at good, as Good Shepherd Church, as this body. This body. How many of you know that God is speaking to this body? He's speaking to this body. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to Good Shepherd Church while you're here. And if you're involved here and you're plugged in, praise the Lord. He's speaking to this house. And, 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 and what he's been speaking has been very clear, has been very clear. That revival is not going to come because of the worship or the pastor. That it's going to come from everyone getting desperate for him. Everyone using their gifts and their talents and bringing it to the Lord. Everyone contributing. Right? And something that we have to get past is that we hear something from the Lord and in the moment we even receive it like, man, that, I, can, I, can, I can feel it in my spirit. I know this is for me. I know I needed to hear that. And then two weeks later and we haven't done anything about it. Right? That's got to change. It has to change. If we want to see an awakening happen in this house, how many of you say that I, I want to see Good Shepherd Church on the map? I want to see people here gathering and loving Jesus. I want to see this place. I want to see this place full of worship. Almost half of you. That's pretty good. I don't know why the other ones are here. It's a good question, right? And, and, and what I'm trying to say to you, church, is that we have to start acting on what he's saying. We can't sit in the stands any longer. If he's saying fast, we need to fast. He's saying get desperate, get desperate. He's saying that, listen, I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to make things happen for you, but I need you to work with me. And we'll get into that just a little bit in a minute. And we've been talking about giving. We've been, and I think a lot of us, it's that, that fear about that like, I don't have enough, or I, I, how is this going to work, right? We're all like, as a father, you look at your budget, and you're like, man, how is this actually going to work? I've never done this before. We already, you know, don't budget our money well already, you know, and, and how is this going to work for me? And if you were here, we talked about God being the steward, and, or excuse me, God's the owner. Some of y'all need to correct me. Y'all weren't listening a couple weeks ago. God's the owner, and we're the steward, amen? We talked about that, Amen? Some people say, oh, Pastor, why are you preaching this again? Because I feel like the Lord told me to look at it from a different angle. And he told me this morning that he wanted me to tell all of you that we serve a God who is supernatural. And some of y'all say, amen, I understand. But do you really understand that? Is what I really want you to really take from anything I say today. Do you really understand that we serve a supernatural God? We serve the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. We serve a God that beyond science, beyond recognition, beyond laws of nature, that he does what he wants to do. And he doesn't have to explain himself. Amen? That's the God that we serve. And a lot of times as a church, we bring our logic and we bring our reasoning to a supernatural God that is unfathomable. And it was Psalms 145, 3 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. No man can fathom. 
And a lot of times when we're inviting God and we're saying, God, how are you going to move? If you've ever had a sick child or you've seen testimonies of kids who the doctor said weren't going to make it or they had cancer or something else was going on or you're like, God, I don't understand how my finances, I don't understand how you're going to bless this. It doesn't make sense to me because you don't understand that the God of the supernatural is going to come on your behalf. That we can pray looking at a child with cancer. That we can pray even though it looks nothing like a good thing. And we can say, no, 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 no. My God is the God of supernatural things. He's the God that's going to answer in the midst of when nothing seems right. He's the God that takes what we have and supernaturally blesses it and brings an abundance. How many of you could say, I've seen God supernaturally take care of my finances? Raise your hand. Supernaturally. Right? Supernaturally. The job just came out of nowhere. Something just came out of nowhere. And how many of us could also say, if you've been walking with the Lord for a while, that something bad has happened out of nowhere? <laughs> I heard, uh, uh, this is really good. It said that, uh, you know, when you give, I remember sometimes me and Maddie, we feel like the Lord would tell us to give to a friend or something like that. And then one day, I remember we got home and we looked in our mailbox on Bosley Road and we had a check in the mail. And it was for somebody, it was a year after we got married. And they were like, hey, sorry, we forgot to give you a wedding gift. And it was for the exact same amount of money. And I was like, wow, that's so cool, right? And stuff like that, how many of y'all, those are God moments we say, right? Stuff like that will build your faith. It will build your faith when God just does these supernatural things. But let me give you another secret. Sometimes we've given a lot of times and we do not see anything close come back to us. And guess what that builds? Your character. That will build your character. The cool things will build your faith. Those dry seasons will build your character because we don't give to what? Receive, right? And God will test your heart on that. (laughs) He will test your heart on that, won't he? (laughs) Well, God, I'm giving today because I need that raise. (laughs) <laughs> I need that to come through. And listen, there is, there is truth attached to that. There is truth that God, he, he rewards those who diligently seek him, right? And so I just really wanted to point out today that we serve a supernatural God. Supernatural means attri- uh, attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. Listen, God operates outside of time. How many of y'all can explain that? I can't. He operates outside of time, completely out of time. There is no, to him, one day is a thousand days. How many of you can fathom how that actually works? I cannot, but let me give you a secret. It does not make me feel any, listen, I should feel inferior when I'm thinking about my supernatural, heavenly, majestic God. That my finite brain cannot stand to think about an infinite being. I'm okay with that. And most atheists and people who are not, it's because they, they don't understand that. How, well, how could that work? Listen, I don't know. But I do know a few things about how he's came through for me supernaturally. I do know a couple things about when I got born again, I was coming down. I was, I was addicted. I was coming down off heroin. And in this moment, I prayed and I was like, God, I love you. I want to give you my life. And something supernatural happened to me and my addiction left me and I start to be completely fine and filled with joy. Something supernatural has to happen to us. And God will supernaturally touch your finances. He will supernaturally come over your kids when they're sick, whatever it may be. We serve the God that doesn't operate in size of the laws of nature. Where's the faith, the faith to rise in us when we should see bad situations and horrible things as opportunities for God to move? Come on. We should see these, these giants that stand before us and, uh, and just say, man, this is an opportunity for me to call on my God. That what is possible Excuse me, what is impossible with man is possible with God. What is impossible with you is, is possible with him. Amen? Listen, come on, do we, do we understand the one who we say we believe in? Do we truly understand? And listen, when you start to understand that he's a supernatural, all-knowing, omniscient, all-powerful God, you will start to become a worshiper. You won't know anything else what to do. Then listen, just go outside. 
This all creation is groaning. Just look at the stars, look at the sky, look at everything he's created. And if that doesn't make you know there's something more out there, look at God's creation and become a worshiper. If that doesn't help, look, look at the forgiveness and mercy that he's given you. And if that don't make you worship, I don't know what will. Right? Somebody say amen. Come on. God is a supernatural God. I had a supernatural experience. I can't explain. Guess what? You can't explain it. I have friends that are atheists. I got friends that uh, they can argue all day long, but they cannot explain how I went from jail to where I am now because something supernatural happened. It wasn't me. <laughs> Obviously, ask my family. And I'm just down here saying, heck no. I remember when I got saved, Matt, Maddie, one of our first Thanksgivings, we went to the house, we had, and Maddie asked all my brothers and everybody, she said, uh, did y'all, and I was just a youth leader back then, just like helping out with the youth. And, and she asked them all, she said, did y'all ever think that Mike would be doing anything like this? And they very quickly were like, no. <laughs> like very quickly, like, oh no. And I remember Dom was kind of like, well, we just figured maybe he would chill out, you know, later on in life, maybe he'd just stop being so crazy. But we never thought he'd be like studying the Bible and teaching people about the Bible. But now they understand that they serve a supernatural God that they serve a supernatural God that moves on their behalf, that goes outside of what makes sense. And you need that supernatural God. You need to learn that you believe in that God when you're gonna think about starting to give. Because it doesn't make sense. Something supernatural to happen. You know, and listen, if you do give, praise the Lord. Awesome, that's amazing. And if you don't, I'm, I'm encouraging to because you'll see God move supernaturally on your behalf and it's gonna build your faith. And also you'll see dry seasons come because that's called life. I can tell you right now, though, me and Maddie have never gone through a season where we didn't have food or anything like that, ever. Right? Ever. Period. And most of the time, we, we might have had some ramen noodles or some sandwich meat or something we didn't want to eat. We don't really know what it's like to not have food in America, right? It's our kids, there's nothing to eat here. Come on, bro. There's a can of salmon in there right now for you. <laughs> There's a can of salmon in that room right now for you. We serve a supernatural God. I want to take you to Matthew 14, verse 13. Pastor Ethan went through the loaves and fish. We're going to go into the story of Jesus and, um, feeding the, the, the thousands. And I felt the Lord gave me a few points out of this. Let me ask you a question. Why, why don't we think that, that, that you see God healing people through your hands? Why don't you think that is? You don't have to answer right now, but I want you to really take a deep look in your heart. Why don't you see it happening in your hands? Why not? I think there's a lot of reasons, but I think a lot of it comes from that. that we're reading a book right now about faith and about identity. And it says, faith can believe what God can do, but identity believes what he can do through you. I think one of the biggest, the biggest blocks in our faith and in the Christian church is that we really don't understand the authority and what we actually carry. It's one of the biggest issues in the church that we have 26 year baby Christians and still don't understand their royal identity in Christ, that they are sons and daughters of the most high King, that Christ is in them the hope of glory. And we listen, we can say yes and amen all we want, but until it starts to manifest in a supernatural way, then we'll see things begin to change. How many of you want to see that, that someone recover from sickness and from, and from you praying? Or do you just want to come to church on Sunday and sing a few songs and hear a good message? How many of you want to see that you went to the hospital and prayed for your uncle and then God brought him back to life? My God. Listen, I, I just got, when I got saved, I, I said, man, I, the, I'll tell you what ruined me. You know what ruined me? Reading the Bible. You know what ruined me? It was reading the word of God. It was reading the book of Acts. It was reading the life of Jesus and said, man, Jesus is right here doing all these amazing things. The book of Acts, Peter and all them, their shadows would fall. That people would bring their body their, to the shadows of their sick and they would be healed. And I said, wow, this is amazing. I want that, Lord. 
And he wants to make sure our hearts are pure. He wants to make sure our hearts are pure and in a good way that we want to see it for his glory. For his glory and not our own. Amen. Listen, you start to get desperate for God. You start to really get rid of all the junk in your life. You start to really understand that you serve a supernatural God and you'll start to see miracles and things happen in your life. I promise, because that's who he is. We don't have to beg him. We don't have to beg Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. How many of you ever heard people praying? You know, right now, come on, Jesus. They don't know, people, we don't know when to stop praying, right? Because we're scared that we're gonna get a bad answer. We don't know when to stop praying because we're scared when we say, does it still hurt? And then they say, yeah, it does. So we don't know when to stop praying. And a lot of times what we do is we, we don't ask them afterwards because we're scared for the answer. How many of y'all can say amen? Right, it's so, but I believe that if, if we start to consecrate ourselves and start to fix our eyes on who we serve as a supernatural God of miracles, we'll start to see things happen. We'll start to see things begin to change. You start to pray and start to fast and start to really consecrate yourself to him. Just start to really give it to him. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay on that for a moment. You guys will be blessed today. We are a, a, a similar to God Pentecostal church. A Pentecostal church. That we are a charismatic church, however you want to put it. I was praying and I asked the Lord, I said, God, why did Peter and Paul walk in these type of miracles and signs and wonders? Why, did, why was it so amazing at the beautiful gate when that guy was standing there lip, uh, crippled and lame? He looked at them and they said, hey, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto thee. Get up and walk. I said, Lord, why is that? Why is that, Jesus? Why is that happening? Why do I, why do I read it here? And the, the book that we say we believe, God, why, do, why is it here, but it's not here? Why is it some of our missionaries, some of our people around the world in Africa and South America, and they're saying, man, we're seeing the blind eyes open. And I'm gonna tell you, when we pray, my eyes are terrible. I will believe, I, almost all the time, people say, man, God's healing eyes. I, I'm always checking. I'm serious. I'm like, come on, Jesus. I don't, I don't like wearing my glasses anyways, if y'all haven't noticed. Because I believe in a supernatural God and I don't want to just get so dead inside and so hard heart that I stop believing in who my God actually is. Did you hear me? Because maybe he didn't answer. Listen, I got very bad back problems. I got feet problems. I got eye problems, but I still believe he is who he is. And I will believe him for your miracle just like I will for mine until it happens, that we'll pray until something happens. And, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be in services and I'll be like checking my eye. Like, okay, all right, that wasn't for me then. <laughs> I'm always checking it. How many of y'all, listen, some of y'all are in this room right now and you've been walking around with the same disease and the same problem for the longest time and you've just given up hope. And, and listen, I get it. I pray. I've been at services that are like, man, God's healing scoliosis right now. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, come on, Jesus. I've had people calling me from California, checking on me because they're believing for my healing. And I'm saying, no, man, sorry. You know? And I'm, uh, but in all that time, the Lord, he, he's, he's looking at my heart. He's testing my heart. Michael, are you going to give up on me? Do you remember when John the Baptist was in, in prison? And he, he got to this place, you know, where he was bold for the Lord. And then here he was in prison and he started to say, man, he said, send to the disciples. He said, is, is this really the Messiah? Are you the, really the one that should come or should we look for someone else? You know how they encouraged him? He said, tell John that the blind see, that the deaf hear and the dead are raised. Come on. Come on. A supernatural God that wants to move through your hands. I wants to move through your hands, and I'm just going to talk about this one part in here. Start fasting, church. Well, pastor, I ain't hearing that. I heard everything else you said this morning, but <laughs> we already got lunch plans today. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, so, listen, start tomorrow, <laughs> okay? Start. I'm going to tell you, two years ago, I felt the Lord called me to fast two days a week 
for six months because we needed some changes to happen in our life because we were going, we just needed something to move. And I can tell you right now that it's moved. It's moved completely. And my wife can attest to that. And we got the answers. We got, we got the breakthrough that we needed. It was hard. It was tough. And then I was with my friend last night and he just, you know, makes me feel like a total wimp. And uh, he's, fasting, he, he's fasted 40 days on just water outside of the abortion clinic in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm like, that is, that's insane. And I'm over here like, yeah, I'm just fasting one day a week, you know, no big deal. Because that's what the Lord, listen, that's what the Lord spoke to me to do. But listen to me, church, start fasting and start praying if you really wanna see the breakthrough. And I believe a lot of you do, you, that you're here at the charismatic church because you like to worship God. That you want, you believe that he's the God of miracles. You believe he's the God of the supernatural. And what I'm saying to you is start to consecrate yourself and get desperate for him and you'll see him do it through your hands. Somebody should be excited about that. You'll see him do it through your hands. Faye, you've seen him do it through your hands, haven't you? Come on, you'll see God move in your hands. Not just me. How many of y'all are tired of just hearing me tell you the stories about what God's doing in my life? Some of you are like, well, no, those are really good. But I'm ready to hear your story. I'm ready to hear your story, Damien. I'm ready to hear your story, your freedom. I'm ready to hear your story, Bevel. Your story where you said, man, oh, I was at work. I was at my job doing what God's called me to do. And there's a guy that had pain in his arm and we laid hands on him and God touched him. That's what I want to hear. We got to leave the walls of this house and take, take what you have and, and give it to the people around you. Amen? Start fasting. Start praying. Start contending with me. And we will see things begin to take another step forward. Amen? I, I, I know this is where God is taking us. I know it for a fact. Listen, I don't ever just fast for no reason, I promise you. It's not something I do for fun. I'm not like that. I'm going to go to Matthew 14, 13 quickly. I want to bring a couple parts into this. So now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds... Um, heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. You know what I love about this? This is so good. This is right after Jesus heard the news that John the Baptist was beheaded. You know some of the best things we can do when we hear terrible news about the people of God, people being persecuted, bad things happening. You know the best thing we could do is to go and destroy the works of the devil. Did you hear me? Jesus went and he separated himself for God. He, he, he heard about John and it said that he went by himself probably to pray and to mourn and then he came back and it said he healed all the sick. What better way to bring vengeance against what the devil's doing than to go and heal all the sick? Amen? Owensboro, Jesus. Davis County, Lord. Kentucky. I don't, I don't want to have to get in a plane and fly to it. Any, I, I don't want that. I'm, it's happening in other places in the United States. Here, Lord. Here, Lord. Here, Lord. And it comes from all of us collectively getting desperate for Jesus. All of us are fasting. Start praying in your weakness. His strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. The people of God, the warriors of God, we are called to be mighty warriors for him. Mighty warriors. The Lord's been speaking to me recently about this past couple months, I've been really down. Just a lot of junk, you know, a lot of crap in my life. And just, I've just been really down about it all. And the Lord finally spoke to me the other day. He said, Michael, he said, you've been defeated. He said, you haven't really noticed. He said, but you've been defeated and you haven't really been fighting. And I thought, man, Jesus, I'm so sorry. It's like, it's okay, but it's time to fight. When life beats you down, when things comes on you, it doesn't mean that we just back down and get depressed. It means that we start to fight and take the authority that we have and call on the supernatural God to come and help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and they had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Now in his evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. Look at your neighbor and say, you give them something to eat. You guys, if you still work, you work with people every day. Your kids are in sports. You're around people who need Jesus all the time. You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And a lot of times that's what we do, just like the disciples. Hey, these people really need you, Lord. People, they're, they're going to die. They're hungry. They should probably go figure that out. And God responds back to us. He's saying, I want you to do it. I want you to do it because I believe God is showing us a couple principles here. He's showing us for one, that, that whatever he's asking of us, we can't pass it on to someone else unless we pass it to Jesus. Did you hear me? We can't pass on what God, God wants you to share the gospel. God wants you to make disciples. He doesn't just want you to bring them to the class where they get disciples. He wants you to be a part of it because everybody plays a part in the kingdom. All of it. And, and, and secondly, um, Listen, church, if God is asking you to do something, you know, he's, if, he's, if he's told you to help somebody out or whatever it may be, do it. Be obedient to it. Whatever it may be, be obedient to what the Lord, you know, the Lord has told you, the Lord told me to stop drinking coffee, something I think that is so lame, right? I definitely wasn't hearing that. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't hear it for two years. I mean, I heard it, <laughs> but I wasn't listening. And, and my staff can attest to that. And... But I know the Lord was telling me to do that. I know what he was saying. And what I'm saying is this, that we think all these minor things in our life are not important, but anything that God's telling you to do, you need to start being obedient. Because we're still, we grieve in the Holy Spirit from every little bit of disobedience. And if we're gonna see Holy Spirit manifest in our lives in a supernatural way, it's gonna start with simple obedience. Simple obedience, simple obedience. I was getting anxiety and all kinds of crazy stuff from coffee, right? How stupid. I was sitting in my desk and I had my, had my little thing and I would try to prepare my sermon and pray and I'd be sitting there drinking cold brew, wondering why I can't focus. It's ignorant. And finally the Lord, I'm gonna tell you, he gave me grace. God will give you grace for whatever he's asking of you. I haven't, I haven't drank any coffee this year. And because God, I know God has given me grace for that. I was at a men's accountability group last night and I had a hot tea from Starbucks. And as soon as one of the guys walked in the door, he very seriously said, what is that? <laughs> and I love that because that doesn't exist in the church because we're afraid. Because a lot of times people's hearts aren't hot. He said, he said, what's that dude? I said, it's tea, bro. I said, it's tea. But I, I was so happy because the other three guys didn't say anything, right? You need people in your life that are holding you accountable to the fast, to anything you're doing. And whatever you say, listen, when you tell your friends or you've told me before, I know God is telling me to do this. I'm gonna ask you, are you doing it? I know God is telling me to give up sugar. I know God is telling me to give up alcohol. I know God is telling me to stop working so much. I know God has been telling me to stop doing these things. Are we being obedient? Because until we start to listen to what seems like those simple things, we're not going to see this great awakening that you think you're, we're going to see. It comes in the simple obedience, in the still voice of God. God's been telling me to get healthy for two, or, come on wife, four years. <laughs> Physically healthy. He's been, he's been showing me, Michael, you, you don't take care of yourself. And I'm like, nah, God, you're not worried about that. It's, you're worried about me reading my Bible and coming to church. Speaking in tongues, Holy Ghost. No, he's saying, no, 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 I want you to be healthy all the way around the board, emotionally, spiritually, physically, everything, and I haven't been listening. And what it's done, it, it's, I can feel how this past couple months that God is beginning to bring breakthrough in my life because I'm starting to do these simple things of obedience that I know he's called me to do. If God's called you, called you to be intentional with your children and take them out one by one and, and spend time with them, you haven't been doing it, start doing it today. Start doing it. He's called you to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with your wife and, and do, something, do something she wants to do and shut up. They love that. 
it's time to start doing it. It's time for, man, to start to serve. Start to serve. And you'll see things start to change. Maddie, will you come? Come on, how many of you could raise your hand and say, I know God's been asking me to do a few things and I really haven't been paying attention to it. Come on, who would be bold enough to say that this morning? Come on, there's some bold people in this room. Mm -hmm. And listen, if you haven't heard that voice, you ain't listening. I'm just telling you. God is constantly telling me something. Maybe I'll start hearing for you if you want to. We, you just meet with me for an hour and I'll tell you what he's telling you to do. I promise. Let me stand to our feet. When Jesus said, you feed them, he was saying, I want you to be involved in the miracles. I want you to be involved in the miracles, not just the pastor, not just the evangelist, not just a special speaker that comes. He's saying, I want you to be involved. And I'm telling you this morning, this is how you'll be involved. Start to simply just be obedient to him. Start to fast. Start to pray. Start to begin to seek him. Read your Bible. Start to read your word more than you ever have in your life. Once again, one of my friends, I was like, I'm just going to start reading every morning. And then, golly. And he was saying how God's been showing him that he's going to read the Bible through every 30 days. And I was like, oh, gosh. (laughs) I'm just like, man, I'm just trying to read for an hour in the morning. You know what I mean? And and I was like, man, but it inspired me. And I thought, I didn't think, no, you know, you're super holy and I'm not good enough. I thought, wow, that's amazing. Because he said, the Lord has been telling me to do this. And I am saying, I know the Lord has been telling me to do some things, like have a men's thing. So don't forget that next Sunday night, we're just going to meet in here at 6 o'clock. And bring all your problems with you. And I'm not talking about your kids. Bring all your issues with you. Bring all your junk with you. And I pray that when you come, and some of y'all women are like, well, what about us? I can hear y'all now. We're working on that too. Be in prayer for these things. How many of you know that we don't need to just start things to start them? Right? We want them to be effective. Can we just close our eyes? Thank you, Lord. Did the prayer team come? Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes. I just want you to picture Moses standing at the sea, the Red Sea. And Moses asked him, God said, basically he said, paraphrasing, he said, what do we do? And God said back to him, he said, what's in your hand? Use use what I've given you. And then the sea began to split. And they began to walk through on dry land. The supernatural God, the Lord of hosts showed up on their behalf. That manna came down from heaven and fed the Israelites because the supernatural God was there to do what they needed to do. But all that time in the wilderness, the only thing he wanted from them was obedience. Simple obedience, he said. Just keep your eyes closed. Just imagine being Mary and and the women and they went to the tomb and the tomb was open. And an angel of the Lord showed up, said he's not here. Because you serve a supernatural God who raises the dead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. I just want you to grab the person's hand beside you. And I want each and every person in this room just to start praying for the person beside you. And I want you to pray that they would be obedient to what the Lord is telling them to do. Everybody in this room, you can keep your eyes closed. You don't have to look at the person. And just start saying, God, help them to be obedient. Help them to be obedient to what you've asked them to do. And then pray, God, give them grace. Give them grace, Lord, that not no guilt, no shame, no condemnation, but give them grace, Lord, that when they stumble, there's brand new mercies for them every morning. 
Come on, just keep praying a little bit. You, you love your neighbor more than that. Lord, give him grace, Jesus. Fill him with your Holy Spirit, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that God, that you're moving on our hearts in this place, Jesus, that you're calling us higher, that you're calling us deeper, Jesus, and we will see things begin to turn and shift, God. Father, I pray for grace, that we have grace for our race, Lord, that we have grace for the things that you've told from us, that you want from us, Jesus, and that, God, we are gonna be able to see the testimonies and breakthrough happen this year in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a supernatural God. Listen, I'm going to tell you, my biggest thing is pray for me. I see people in wheelchairs, and I'm not going to lie, I'm, pretty, I'm shy away. I'm like, oh, Lord, that's somebody else's anointing. It's just called unbelief. Lack of faith. Start to be obedient, church. You'll see God begin to move and use you in ways that you never thought he would use you. And I can't wait to hear all about it. If you need a prayer, I want you to go ahead and just come down right now. If you need salvation, you need to say, I need to understand Jesus. I need to give my life to him. If that's you, I want you to come. Father, we bless you. We bless everyone here. Lord, we bless their families, bless their children. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you need prayer, if you want to worship, continue to. You're more than welcome. Have a good week. We'll see you Wednesday night.